and welcome back to tutorial two where we're going to just look at a few more of the um few more of the specific effects that we can do and have a look at some of the bonus filters as well so let's take a look first in fact let's create an adjustment layer again over the top of everything here and i'm going to move my effects and presets over here so we can see them a little bit easier one of the standard sorts of uh, of uh, film wash here as i said before in the introductory tutorial here um, any of these effects with an asterisk in here are designed so that you can just come in here and um, and very very easily uh, play around with them so and enrich colors with an asterisk here so we can just come in here and open up our second source here and take that to zero or to to a hundred percent and that will just change change how we mix some of these things together uh, the same with the desaturate actually if we wanted a bit more color going on in there that, let's take out some more of that color there we go so we can just change any of these these are all designed to work uh, very very simply very very easily the ones without an asterisk again you can also go in and, and have a look but you might find that uh, you know they're they're doing something a little bit a little bit special a little bit different here now a nice thing is that um, a lot of these color depth independent so we can work in 16-bit color or 32-bit color uh, and depending on the uh, but depending on the filter some of these won't be using the floating point uh, bit depth here for the most part if we're working with just a final uh, adjustment layer over the top of everything this isn't going to be a deal breaker whatsoever but just uh, just so you're aware so let's take this back to uh, to 8 bit here and we'll actually look at another one of these uh, filters so let's look now at black and white conversion one so I'm just gonna drag and drop that over the top here so black and white conversion one very very easy to uh, the basic one very very easy to work with we've got a, a final contrast in the form of a curves layer here um, if you prefer you can just apply a, um, a levels command at the end uh, instead if you want to but if you get used to working with curves they're they're very very powerful so we want to increase the contrast a little bit here without blowing out the the black levels or the white levels we're just going to create this very very steep s curve here so the way it was before and just to give it a bit more punch we're just going to give it a bit of an s curve here so that's uh black and white basic this is a, a very nice way of uh, of converting a uh, color image to black and white um, but if we have a look at black and white conversion advanced this a little bit more um, uh, more fully featured what we've got is a lot of filters that can be adjusted so the color filter here is basically it's, it's just like it's almost like putting a, a color filter over the lens of the camera to block out certain uh, certain lights here so all I'm doing is just moving our our hue around until I get a nice just a much nicer image there so if I if I move my hue around to 232 you can see the sky has turned completely white and I'll move it the other way around here we can actually almost darken up the sky and try and get as, as much contrast as possible going on there there we go so that's that's our original black and white basic and that's black and white using using the color filter over the top there if you really want to you can come into the the fine tune mix here as well and we can we can muck about with with how our channels are uh, are mixed together so in what proportion uh, so work with the red to red green to green and blue to blue in this case just play around with those so you can see actually that's the before that's the after in fact in, in this case I actually prefer the the, the before but uh, there you go and the final contrast again just a standard levels command here uh, so if you really wanted to you instead of using the levels command now in the same way as before you could be using the the curves command instead color correction 
curves. I mean, it's all up to you. It's all, all very uh, uh, personal preference there. I quite like using the curves, but um, I understand that it's a little bit more complicated than, than using the levels command for people who are, who are just sort of starting out. So again, that's just giving us our black and white image, a bit of a pop. So I want to show you actually uh, the difference between using the film wash for black and white and just using the regular uh, hue saturation uh, for the black and white here. So let's uh, use hue saturation and just take our saturation down to, uh, to minus 100. In fact, let's bring this up here so I can easily, easily show you this. So that's really, that's quite a, um, uh, lacking in a, in a lot of contrast there. But with our film wash here, we've got different areas highlighted and we've got a lot more punch going on to the image. So that's quite a, a, a boring black and white picture. And that's actually got a bit of bite to it. It looks really quite nice. And the great thing is we've only had to apply that, that filter to, to the one adjustment layer rather than applying it to each uh, layer individually as we would do if we weren't using uh, adjustment layers. So it actually looks really quite nice. Bundled with the uh, film wash, you get a lot of grain as well. So let's have a look at our film wash. We get grain. We've got three different grain movies. So so now I've imported the grain in here and let's, let's have a look how to use it. So we'll go to interpret footage and into the main here. Uh, we can use the, uh, the frame right here. It's, it's in power, but it shouldn't make too much of a difference because it is just, uh, it's grain. So it's going to be moving up very, very quickly. So you're not going to see too much of a difference. The only thing I'm going to change is I'm going to have it looping 999 times and hit OK. And this will just basically give us 10 seconds of, of grain that will last now for, um, forever for the duration of the easily for the duration of our uh, of our composition here so it's actually a little bit too small uh, for our widescreen comp and it will it will automatically scale uh, keeping keeping the ratio in there so I'm going to hit control alt and F and this will scale the footage up to fit um, to fit our composition size and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the blending mode if you can't see the modes down here then there's a little switch down at the bottom here uh, to uh, expand or collapse the transfer modes window here. And I'm just going to change our blend mode to overlay. And now we've got some quite hearty grain going on over there. Again, if you think the grain's too much, hit T to come into the opacity. And we can just make that a little bit more subtle, take that down a little bit there. And now we've got a bit of subtle grain going in over the top just to, uh, just to give us something uh, slightly meatier in our, in, our black and white, uh, in our black and white conversion here. Now there are some really, really good um, grain plugins for After Effects CS3. Uh, but my suggestion is when you're using them is always just render out a, um, a short amount onto a onto a 50% neutral uh, background and then just bring that in and just do this looping little technique here. It saves a lot of time um, uh, rendering because these grain plugins, especially the really good ones, they are very, very slow to render, to render out that sort of uh, good noise. Bit of grain going on there. Let's take that up even higher. So you, you've really uh, got a nice chance to see that. And of course, you really like your grain, just duplicate it again. And again, and it really uh, starts to, to mess up your, your picture quite nicely. There we go. And in fact, just offset these a little bit. Remember, it's looping all that time. So, so you can just afford to offset it a little bit. And you've got a really nice, really big, heavy, grainy, high contrast, black and white image going there. Looks really nice. And all of this is, uh, is coming just from our original here. So you can see just by putting a film wash on, couple of adjustments, couple of grain layers, you've got something that's completely different than, uh, than you had before. And that really is the, uh, the power of film wash.